My name is Dr. Jacob Wilson. I'm on the Scientific Advisory Board of Dimatized Nutrition, and I also have a laboratory at the University of Tampa where we specialize in building muscle as well as bodybuilding and how to lose fat and get shredded. I'm a scientist, but God, man, I absolutely love bodybuilding. You know, I love lifting weights. So ever since I was probably five or six, I knew I wanted to be a scientist, and I knew I wanted to be specialized in sport to study how to get bigger, how to get shredded at the same time, basically the sport of bodybuilding itself. The thing about bodybuilding is this, it's such an interesting sport because basically to gain size and to be shredded at the same time, they don't mix, right? So this is to me, it's, it's fascinating. It's, it's the ultimate dichotomy. You know, here we are today and we have a bodybuilding laboratory at University of Tampa. We're doing work with Dimatized Nutrition and as we speak, we're doing around six experiments on bodybuilding. We can look at muscle from the bone to the skin. We can scan your whole body and tell you the most accurate ways to look at fat. You name it, we can actually look at it. I wanna bring this sport to a new level with the latest that science has to offer. Basically, if you look at all the scientific literature out there, we've narrowed down how muscle grows to at least three to four different mechanisms. And the thing is, with training, everyone's like, oh, this is the best training method. Oh, this is the best training method. But that training method might only maximize one of those mechanisms. So what we want to do is hit each of these mechanisms. And what those are are this. You know when guys go to the gym and they're like, oh, I'm gonna get my swole on, right? Well, there's actually something to that. We call it the cell swelling theory. So when you train and you get a pump, kind of like Arnold talked about, he was right, it actually, your cells, your muscle cells themselves, sense that swelling as a threat. And they're basically saying, okay, I have to grow or die. So they restructure themselves and get larger. So you have to target, well, what are the methods to increase that? Short rest period lengths, seem to increase that edema or that blood to the muscle. Eight to 12 repetitions, supersets, those are ideal. On top of that is recruiting or calling into play the larger muscle fibers. For those of you guys who know muscle fibers, you know we have our slow twitch muscle fibers, which are good for endurance, and then we have the large fast twitch muscle fibers. Those are recruited with the heavier type of lifting, right? Like six to eight repetitions, very heavy. And when you recruit them, they turn on protein synthesis and you grow. So that's the second thing. And then the third thing is mechanical trauma, like damage to the tissue. And where that occurs essentially is when you're lowering a weight and again, heavy lifting. So basically what you wanna do in your training is you wanna periodize your training so that you're optimizing each of these mechanisms and there's so many different techniques that you can use. One theory that I haven't talked about yet is called metabolic stress. Now everyone knows, you know when you get that burning sensation when you're training. Well that's acidity building up in the muscle. That's lactic acid building up in the muscle. What one of my friends, Dr. Gunderman did was he took muscle cells and isolated them. He put lactic acid and basically they grew. So muscles actually grow, that burning sensation will actually make them grow. So for example, if you go to the gym and you rest like five minutes and you're talking about what you did on the weekend, that clears all out, that metabolic stress, so you won't grow. So bodybuilders traditionally will have, you know, they'll train with an eight to 12 rep range and they're only resting like 60 seconds. Sometimes they're doing supersets and strip sets. So to build up metabolic stress and cell swelling, you're gonna have short rest periods. But let's say you wanna optimize mechanical stress. That's gonna be heavier lifting. And to do that, if you're lifting with short rest periods, you can't lift as heavy. So the mechanical stress is less. So during your heavy days, you should actually rest three to five minutes and realize that you're gonna maximize the mechanical load. You're trying to lift as heavy as you can. Now that repetition range, it might still be you know, eight repetitions, six repetitions. So it's still in a higher repetition range. I'm not talking about powerlifting, but you're resting longer so that each time you lift, the weights are heavy. The biggest mistake I think people make in the gym is they underestimate what their capabilities actually are. So they limit themselves first mentally, and that leads to limiting themselves physically. So for example, everyone's always worried like, oh my God, you know, I'm gonna overtrain. So I can only train everything once a week. 
but studies are showing that the more frequent you train, the better your gains will be. So sometimes when you have an overload on the muscle every day, your performance is not gonna be best, but you're beating the muscle up so much that it basically has no choice but to grow. So you're gonna have to expose your muscles to a lot of stress. And there's new studies that are coming out by some of my colleagues in Finland and Norway, where they're showing really good weightlifters are gaining hypertrophy from going from three days a week to training to six days a week of training per body part. Now I'm not saying that everyone should do that, that's an advanced technique. What I am saying is don't limit yourself. The human body can withstand a lot more you can think, so long as your nutrition and your sleep are in place. As far as mass and optimizing the most anabolism, the compound movements are always gonna be the center you know, of a bodybuilding program. That's gonna be things like squats, it's gonna be things like bench press, it's gonna be things like leg press. But there's a difference between bodybuilding and powerlifting. If you look, bodybuilding is about making the exercise harder. You're trying to beat your muscles up. So if you're doing a bench press and you're bodybuilding, your back might be flat, you're focusing on the muscle, you're focusing on every aspect of the lift. If you're a power lifter, you're gonna get an arch in your back, you're gonna shorten the range of motion, so you're gonna have leg drive. Same thing with squatting. You're gonna use your belt to get, you, get the weight up, but in bodybuilding, you're focusing on destroying the muscle. So the compound movements are still critical, but your intent should be to focus on those muscles and to destroy them. It's a lot different in that sense. Now, once those compound movements are in place, bodybuilding is also a sport of symmetry. So you're gonna have to focus then on the isolation movements. But it, obviously someone's gonna have a huge gap if all they do is isolation movements and they're not doing the compound. One of the things about bodybuilding is this. If you're going to shock the muscle to grow, we know we need change. Okay, so changing the exercise is actually absolutely one of the best ways you can do that. So using non-traditional lifting type of techniques absolutely can not only shock your muscles to grow, but also translate certainly into, you know, functionality, you know, in, in our normal society as well. So one of the dichotomies with bodybuilding is that you have to gain size and you gotta lose fat at the same time. So to gain size, you lift weights, to lose fat, you do cardio. And sometimes bodybuilders do two hours of cardio a day. But look at a marathon runner. I mean, is that something that a bodybuilder aspires to be? But clearly, what we found in our laboratory is that the longer you do cardio, the more muscle you lose. So basically, you're spending all this time in the off season gaining muscle, and you're losing a lot of it with long duration cardio. So what our laboratory's done is try and figure out how to solve this problem. And one of the things that we've done is high intensity interval training. When I say high intensity interval training, I'm talking about 10 to 30 seconds of all out, balls to the wall, kill yourself, nauseated sprinting. When I say 10 seconds, you should have nothing left at the end of that 10 seconds. When I say 30 seconds, you should feel like you're gonna die. When you do that type of cardio, what happens is, what we found is essentially, literally, in 10 seconds time, you can deplete your muscle energy stores by like 15%. And that might take like 60 minutes with traditional cardio. What that does is it sends a massive signal to your body and says, oh my God, I have to increase my fat burning machinery. And when you do that, you're burning fat the rest of the day. So we've actually found that with 10 to 30 second all out sprints, that you're actually losing more fat than with a long duration 30 to 60 minute cardio. And yet you actually maintain your size. In fact, we did a study in our lab where we compared low intensity cardio to high intensity cardio. Not only they lose more fat, but they gain muscle in their quads. So the actual sprinting can be somewhat anabolic. The best way to avoid injury in the gym is to periodize your training. If someone responds really well to heavy training and all they do every single time is lift five reps, one to five repetitions every time they go to the gym, or six to eight reps every time, they rest long, rest period lengths. They're constantly loading the muscle, and that's where it takes its toll on your joints, you know, ligaments, you feel the strain, you get an injury. And God, injuries are the worst thing to the bodybuilder because it takes them months to recover. You know, if you're out for a month, you lose muscle, and then it takes you a month to recover. You just lost two months. 
Periodization is programmed change. One day a week, you might train traditional hypertrophy training, which is gonna be eight to 12 repetitions, 30 to 60 seconds rest. One day you might train heavy, like in a six to eight repetition range. Then if you're feeling your joints are a little bit hurt, there's a new technique, what's known as blood flow restriction training. And this technique, what happens is if you restrict blood flow to a limb, you only have to lift at like 30 to 40% of your maximal weight and you actually can grow. Focus on the goals. So if you're trying to focus on conditioning and primarily muscle hypertrophy or growth, maybe two out of your four workouts are gonna be traditional hypertrophy. The next day is more of a hypertrophy superset type of day. The next day is a heavy day. And then maybe you throw in a blood flow restriction day and then you start over. So now your joints are getting certain rest periods and you recover. Basically, when you talk about training, with bodybuilding, it's like any other sport. You have to master your trade. Get everything you can out of every single lift. If you're doing a set of 12, every single rep should count. We know with studies, when people are focusing on the muscle, they activate more of it. So going through the motions is gonna get you those types of results, right? So it's focusing, make everything count. Make every meal count, make your sleep count, make every repetition count, make every set count. Be meticulous, write down how you felt in the gym, write down what you think you're gonna be and where you're gonna be, and set goals that are attainable. What I want is this, there's so much misconceptions out there, there's so many myths out there. I want people to be educated. So for more videos and content like this, keep coming back to bodybuilding.com. I guarantee we're gonna have the latest that science has to offer on this sport.